Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chansa. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 15th of June. North India reels under severe heat wave, rainfall wreaks havoc in northeastern Assam state. Ailing ex military ruler Parvez Musharraf set to return to Pakistan from UAE. And Former Afghan officials left for luxury life abroad, says Wall Street Journal report. And now for all the details. A severe bout of heat wave spell continued to sway parts of northern India on Wednesday, making it difficult for people to carry out their daily activities. Meanwhile, in the northeastern state of Assam, residents of Guwahati city struggled amid severe water logging due to incessant rainfall. At least four people have also lost their lives in the massive landslide in Guwahati, officials said. Soaring temperatures in parts of northern India continued to affect daily life on Wednesday as a severe heat wave spell swept across the region. People took protective measures from the sizzling sun and sipped on juices to stay hydrated and find some relief. The intense and prolonged heat wave has made conditions for people, especially those who work outdoors and those who are homeless, very difficult. The Indian summer starts early in April and continues till late June, when the monsoon showers usher a sort of respite in July. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Guwahati city in northeastern Assam state, people struggled with water logging as the city has been receiving heavy spells of rain for the past few days, which has thrown normal life out of gear. The weather office said the current spell of intense rainfall was likely to continue over northeast India during next five days. At least four people have also reportedly been killed in a massive landslide in Guwahati due to the rainfall, officials have said. With this, the total number of persons losing their lives in this year's flood and landslides in Assam has gone up to 42. Security forces gunned down two terrorists belonging to Pakistan-based lashkar e taiba terror outfit in an encounter in Shopian district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Wednesday. One of the two were involved in the killing of bank manager Vijay Kumar earlier this month. In another separate encounter in Kulgam district, two local terrorists who attacked slain teacher Rajni Bala last month were also killed, the police confirmed. Two terrorists belonging to Pakistan-based Lashkar-e-Taiba or LET terror outfit were killed in an encounter in Shopia district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Wednesday. Security forces identified the terrorists as Jan Mohammad Lone of Shopia and Tufail Ganai. Jan Mohammad Lone, besides other crime, was involved in the killing of bank manager Vijay Kumar earlier this month in Kulgam district, informed the police. The police army will get a cordon. The cordon will get a fine. And at night, at 3 o'clock, the two of them will be killed. The one who is John Mohammad Lone is Tufail Ganai. Meanwhile, in an another encounter that resumed on Wednesday after a night-long lull in Kulgam district, two local terrorists affiliated to Hezbollah Mujahideen terror outfit who attacked slain teacher Rajni Bala were killed, confirmed the police. 36-year-old Rajni was killed last month after terrorists fired upon her in broad daylight outside her school. Jammu and Kashmir in recent weeks witnessed a wave of civilian killings with terrorists seemingly targeting non-Kashmiris including migrant workers and members of minority Hindu and Sikh communities in the Muslim-majority Kashmir Valley. India blames Pakistan of stoking violence in the region. Islamabad, however, denies the allegations. Moving on, Pakistan's former military ruler Parvez Musharraf suffering from a health ailment in UAE could be set for a return home from exile as he is at a stage where recovery is not possible. 
reports have suggested. His party leaders said they have urged the Pakistan government to facilitate his homecoming as he wants to live in his own country for the rest of his life. Pakistan's former president and military dictator Parvez Musharraf, who was hospitalized for weeks in a UAE hospital due to health complications and is at a stage where recovery is not possible, could be set for a return home from exile, reports have suggested. Former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif in a tweet on Monday urged the coalition government led by his PMLN party to facilitate the return of Musharraf, who is suffering from amyloidosis. Sharif said he has no enmity or animosity with the 79-year-old military dictator who had seized power in a coup in 1999 by ousting him and ruled as president until 2008. The country's army has also reportedly endorsed the return and offered an air ambulance to bring Musharraf from UAE. If his family and doctors approve, Musharraf's party said their leader's condition is not that good and he wants to live in his own country for the rest of his life. And now, he, he, like his health is obviously is not as, as good as it is, but it's not improving to the level we want. So that's what uh, he wants. He wants to go back and live in his own country for the rest of his life. Musharraf has been living in the UAE since 2016, where he was allowed to travel for medical treatment. At the time he was being tried for treason in the Pakistani court, he was sentenced to death by the Anti-Terrorism Court in 2019, but the decision was overturned by a high court a year later. More news from Pakistan. Pakistan Army's media wing chief Major General Babur Iftikhar has rejected PTI Chairman Imran Khan's claims of a foreign conspiracy in his ouster as Prime Minister. Iftikhar said that there was no evidence found as such by intelligence agencies and it was unfortunate to see baseless propaganda against the armed forces. Pakistan Army's media wing, Inter-Services Public Relations ISPR Director General, Major General Babar Iftikhar has rejected PTI Chairman Imran Khan's claim of a foreign conspiracy in his ouster as the Prime Minister. The ISPR chief during a TV interview said that intelligence officials had categorically informed that there was no evidence found as such and it was unfortunate to see baseless propaganda against the armed forces and making its leadership a target of criticism. Imran Khan initially blocked a no-confidence move against him in April, saying a forum of civil and military leaders, the National Security Committee, had endorsed the alleged conspiracy. Pakistan's parliament eventually voted in favor of removing Khan from office after which PMLN President Shahbaz Sharif took over as the Prime Minister. Khan has claimed that the United States was behind his downfall, an assertion that Washington denies, but reports suggest he had lately fallen out with the country's powerful military over differences for the appointment of country's top intelligence chief. The military has directly ruled the country for almost half its nearly 75-year history. It viewed Khan and his conservative agenda favorably when he won election in 2018, but that support waned over the appointment and economic troubles. In news from Afghanistan, as humanitarian crisis exacerbates in Afghanistan and many Afghan evacuees who fled the country since Taliban took over last August struggle worldwide, a report by the Wall Street Journal says several officials from former Afghanistan President Ashraf Ghani's tenure escaped to luxury homes and properties abroad. American newspaper The Wall Street Journal has reported that former senior Afghan officials and their families spent millions purchasing expensive homes in the U.S. and abroad in the final years of the war, which became luxurious landings when they escaped the escalating violence in Afghanistan. Some government officials during former Afghanistan President Ashraf Ghani's tenure held foreign citizenships and assets that allowed for smoother relocations in their properties outside Afghanistan, according to the Wall Street Journal review of public documents, interviews and other records. 
Others invested in new properties and moved their families abroad as the Taliban gained momentum, ultimately seizing control of Kabul last August. The report also mentioned former National Security Advisor Hamdullah Mohib, former Finance Minister Ikail Ahmed Hakmi, Atta Muhammad Noor, former Governor of Balkh, Khalid Paindia, last Minister of Virans of Ghani's administration and Mustafa Mastoor, former Minister of Economy. Jessica Donati, who made the report, said on Twitter that indeed this is just a tiny fraction of what we heard. Due to lack of public documents, it was difficult to verify info, especially when many officials used family members and middlemen to funnel their money out of the country. This comes as many foreign organizations have expressed concerns over the humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan, with an estimated 90% of people living under the poverty line. Ashraf Khani has been accused of taking government money when he fled Kabul to prevent bloodshed, allowing the Taliban to seize the capital unopposed. Ghani has denied those allegations. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lankan Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe in a special address to the nation on Tuesday regarding the current fuel and gas crisis said, the country is now facing the most difficult three weeks regarding the supplies. However, the government has secured sufficient funds to ensure four months' worth of supply following this period, he added. Vikramasinghe informed that a new credit line provided by India will support the cash-strapped island nation's fuel purchase for another four months from July, even as an LPG shipment of 3,500 empty reached Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is currently facing its worst economic crisis since independence from Britain in 1948. The island nation does not have any rupee income and by end of the year, the rupee crisis will be solved with the introduction of taxes, the Prime Minister said. Meanwhile, representatives from the heavyweight financial and legal advisors Lazard and Clifford Chance arrived in Sri Lanka to kick off the restructuring of over 12 billion US dollars in debt. The advisors reached the country a week before a delegation from the International Monetary Fund is expected in Colombo for bailout talks. The four holy couple Vastu relics of Lord Buddha brought from India were placed with great reverence in Mongolia's capital Ulaanbaatar city on the auspicious full moon day on Tuesday. The relics will be put on display for about 11 days for devotees to pay respects and seek blessings. The four holy relics of Lord Buddha from India were on Tuesday ceremoniously displayed at the Gandan Monastery in Mongolia's capital city of Ulaanbaatar for an 11-day exposition to mark the auspicious occasion of the Mongolian Buddha Purnima or Full Moon Day. The relics brought by a delegation led by India's Law Minister Kiran Rijiju were placed in the monastery in a special ceremony and were welcomed with prayers and Buddhist chants. A large number of monks and dignitaries were also present on the occasion. A procession was also taken out with participants wearing traditional attires. Speaker of Mongolian Parliament thanked the Indian government for bringing the sacred relics to Mongolia. On behalf of the uh, Parliament of Mongolia, on behalf of the uh, devotees, Buddhist community of Mongolia, I would like to thank uh, to the government of India uh, for this uh, auspicious day. The holy relics of Lord Buddha, which are returning to Mongolia after 29 years, will be made available for devotees to pay respects and seek blessings. The relics are part of 22 antiques that were recovered from a site in India's eastern Bihar state, which is believed to be Kapil Vastu city. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.